السلام عليك زين الأنبياء السلام على السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته everyone and welcome to uh, our weekend retreat covering book 39 of Imam al-Ghazali's Ihya Ulum al-Din which we've titled the Sunnah of Reflection so inshallah without further w- uh, ado we'll begin Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Yaliqu Bijalali Wajhihi Wa Adimi Sultanih Allahumma Laka Alhamdu Hatta Tarda Wa Laka Alhamdu Ida Radit Wa Laka Alhamdu Bada Ridha Subhanaka La Nuhsi Thana An Alaika Anta Kama Athnaita Ala Nafsik Allahumma Salli Wa Salim Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Miftahi Babi Rahmatillah Adada Ma Fi Ilmallah صلاة وسلاما دائمين بدوام ملك الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم نوينا التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. So, Alhamdulillah, we're continuing to look at Imam Al Ghazali's magnum opus, his uh, truly incredible work, Ihya Ulum Al Din, the revival of the religious sciences. And several years ago, Sheikh Yahya Rodas began uh, these weekend retreats going through. Uh, each particular book, starting from the 21st book, The Marvels of the Heart, with the intention that, inshallah, we'll continuously have a study uh, uh, in our lives of Imam al-Ghazali's really seminal and uh, uh, marvelous work, which highlights major aspects of the religion, and that the ulama, this is of the most beloved of books to the ulama and to the righteous. So we're coming towards the end of the entire uh, the entire series, the entire book, and inshallah that will be in the upcoming retreat. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and with his permission and, and assistance. Uh, and in this weekend retreat, we're on book 39, which is Kitab al Tafakkur, the book of reflection. So we've titled this retreat, The Sunnah of Reflection, is really understanding the major aspects of reflection that allows for fruits to manifest spiritually uh, within our hearts and within our consciousness. So inshallah, in this session, the first uh, session, we're going to look at Imam al-Ghazali's introduction and we'll talk about the merit of reflection, why it is so virtuous and the importance of having a regular commitment in our lives to reflection. And we'll look at Quranic verses and prophetic ahadith on that and sayings of the pious predecessors. And inshallah, everyone should have uh, a copy of the outline. I believe it's in the middle of the room or on your, uh, on your chairs. And it's been sent out uh, to those who've registered online. Uh, and that really gives us a breakdown of the five sessions that we'll have today. Uh, ta'ala. So inshallah, we'll begin. Imam al-Ghazali says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لم يقدر لانتهاء عزته نحوا ولا قطرا So he says, all praise belongs to Allah who has ordained no direction or location wherein his glory may be delimited. ولم يجعل لمراقي أقدام الأوهام ومرمى سهام الأفهام إلى حما عظمته مجرى nor has he set up for the stairways of the feet of imagination or the range of the arrows of human understanding any course by which to reach the sanctuary of his greatness. Imam al-Ghazali immediately begins at the highest level. Is that recognizing that reflection and really what is the goal of reflection is to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to talk about that inshallah multiple times. Is to have this uh, unceasing witnessing of the Creator who has this beautiful order and His will and decree and knowledge and wisdom in all of creation. So the end goal is witnessing. And then we recognize at the beginning 
that complete comprehension, complete understanding and witnessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be done by created beings. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, the greatest of all those who had knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who were the greatest of those who were in nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beloved, the chosen one, the perfect servant of Allah, the perfected servant of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, who had the greatest understanding, he said, Subhanaka, la nuhsli thana an alayk. Glory belongs to you. We are not able to fully praise you. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. You are as you have praised yourself. And the scholars say, no one knows Allah except Allah in reality in the fullest meaning of knowing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us uh, opportunities to expand in the limited knowledge that we have the potential to acquire. So then Imam al-Ghazali goes on, and I'll just read the translation for the sake of time. Rather, he has left the hearts of those who seek him bedazzled and bewildered in the wilderness of his magnificence. Which is why they say that the, the ends of those who arrive at nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just being bewildered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's magnificence. Whenever they move in an attempt to arrive at their goal, they are forcibly driven back by the sublime splendors of divine majesty. And we're very fortunate to have a translation by Sidi Muhammad Isa Waili, which inshallah uh, will be published soon enough and will be available to all. But we're, we're fortunate to be able to uh, rely on his translation for this retreat. So then he goes on. So when the people are uh, uh, attempting to arrive at the goal of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding his beauty, his majesty, his magnificence, his sublimity, his perfection subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are forcibly driven back by the sublime spirit. Uh, splendors of divine majesty yet when in despair they purpose to turn away their issues from the pavilions of divine beauty the call patiently patiently that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone gets to the point where they're so overwhelmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty and splendor and magnificence that the attributes of beauty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beauty helps them not lose hope and calls out and says, patiently, patient, don't give up. Even though you're overwhelmed, and it's a li there's still more that you can attain. And then the same thing happens again where they become overwhelmed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports them with his gentleness and with his uh, uh, lutf and with his mercy and support subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Imam al-Ghazali, he goes on and he mentions that those, the seekers are then told Give yourselves over to thinking upon the lowly station of servitude. In other words, think about your own servitude. And that will be, inshallah, covered in session four. Think about your own self, and when you reflect of, upon your own self, you will come to understandings about your Lord. Were you to reflect upon the majesty of the divine Lord, you could not reckon it rightly. If you seek a subject beyond your own attributes, on which to reflect, behold the gifts and bounties of Allah, exalted is he, and how they are brought to you in ceaseless succession. So then he's talking about reflecting on Allah's blessings upon you. That if you try to reflect too deeply on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, his that, you will be totally overwhelmed. But the way that you come to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflect upon what he wants you to reflect upon, one of the ways to do that is to think about his blessings that he bestows upon you ceaselessly. Then renew your remembrance of Allah and your thankfulness to him for each of those blessings and benefits. Reflect upon the oceans of divine acts of providence, the af'al. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine acts, his actions, which is what we see in creation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence. And they are all one in reality. But in terms of our ability to recognize, we go from the actions to the attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence. Repl reflect upon the oceans of divine acts of providence. See how they pour out over the universe, bringing goodness and badness, good and evil, gain and harm, hardship and ease, triumph and utter loss, repair and ruin, concealment and divul uh, divulgation, faith and disbelief, acknowledgement and denial. If each of you then pass on from contemplation of divine actions to that of the divine essence, you are attempting something unspeakable. This is really important. So Imam al-Ghazali just kind of, we're supposed to ease into it, but there's no real easing into anything with Imam al-Ghazali. He's a master of taking you into the ocean and then teaching you simultaneously how to swim. Right? And then at the end, everything works out. And he's a master, radiallahu anhu wa nafa'anallahu bih. So he says, if you try to go into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence and reflect upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's that, you are attempting something unspeakable and unattainable. Indeed, you are endangering your very soul in that you wrongfully and outrageously purpose to transgress the bounds of human capacity. For all human intellects, even before they can receive their first illuminations, are overwhelmed, reduced to abject retreat by the all-compelling force of Allah's irresistible might. And we're going to see later that Imam al-Ghazali likens this type of reflection to looking at the sun. He says, if you try to look at the sun, and the sun is a created thing. It's not particularly special in the grand scheme of things. When the day of judgment comes, it'll be destroyed like things in the, in the lowest heaven. But if you try to look directly at the sun, it will blind you. But what do you do? You look at the effect of the sun. You can feel the warmth of the sun. You can see the shadows. You can see how it impacts things and uh, plants grow and so forth. So you learn about the sun through what you see from its effects. And you know that that's from the sun. So if a person tries to uh, uh, delve into reflecting upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, then they are attempting the impossible and the unspeakable because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is, is infinite in the absolute sense of the word and we are extremely weak and limited. Then Imam al-Ghazali says, وَالصَّلَاةُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ سَيِّدِي وَلَدِي آدَمْ وَإِنْ كَانَ لَمْ يَعَدَّ سِيَادَتَهُ فَخْرًا An exaltation and abundant salutation be upon Muhammad, the master of the children of Adam, even though that mastership is not to be accounted an idle boast. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Salatan tabqa lana fi arasat al qiyamati uddatan wa dhakhra. A salah, a blessing upon him that will be uh, stored for us and a treasure for us during the calamities of the day of resurrection. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi alladhina asbaha kullu wahidin minhum fi samai iddini badra. And upon his family and companions who each of them in the celestial heavens of religion, they are all a full moon. رضي الله عنهم أجمعين ولطوائف المسلمين صدر وسلم تسليما كثيرا. So then he says now to proceed after giving us this framework of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that part of the path of drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who seek the highest degrees of nearness and understanding and ma'rifah and illumination and gnosis, it has to uh, be attained through reflection. But that that reflection also comes with stages and states that a person can become overwhelmed, but then they're supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that even in that reflection, there has to be an adab with Allah. There has to be the proper etiquette the proper behavior and manners befitting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, befitting of Allah's majesty, and that a person comes to that with humility and with seeking his assistance and support 
subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing that drawing closer to him is something that can totally annihilate the human being. Just like looking directly at the sun can uh, uh, overwhelm us as well. And then sending salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, the exemplar, the master of all people of reflection and insight, the one who had the greatest intellect sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, the one who guided us to the deepest realities and meanings of reflection, the one who removed the veil of ignorance for us so that we could attain the fruits of reflection, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Then Imam al-Ghazali says, أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَقَدْ وَرَدَتِ السُنَّةُ بِأَنَّ تَفَكُّرَ سَاعَةٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَنَةٍ Then Sidi Muhammad Isa Wali, he translates, جزاهالله كل خير, says to commence, it is related in the sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ said, an hour of reflection is better than a year of worship. An hour of reflection, one hour of reflection is better than a year of worship. Someone, you know, people, especially in today's world, Muslims have become very uh, utilitarian. You know, that everything has to be very outward and it needs to, you know, this many thawab, this much reward, pray two rak'ahs, pray four rak'ahs is better than two rak'ahs, six rak'ahs is better than four, and so forth. And generally, that's correct. Obviously, that, that has its truth. But at the same time, quality matters. Your state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters. So when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says, that reflecting for an hour is better than a year of worship because there are certain things that you might attain through reflection that then enhance your worship. If a person is very limited in their understanding, or for example, they're worshiping for just a reward, and inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that. So we don't say that a person doesn't receive that, but then they reflect more deeply and they reflect, for example, uh, a degree of reflection that every believer should have, which is on blessings. Then they start to realize, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so generous to me. Allah has been so merciful to me. Every single blessing, the blessing of that he created me from non-existence and he brought me into existence. And in every single moment, he sustains me. He provides for me that my uh, uh, respiratory system continues to work. Walillahi alhamd, alhamdulillah. That my circulation works without me having to push my blood through my body. That the temperature in our body is regulated. That when we eat, the food is broken down into the necessary you know, nutrients that we need and the remainder is removed and so forth. A person thinks about all of that and then they realize that that is purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace. So it increases them in love. So then their worship, when it becomes colored by love, is different. So that hour of reflection changes their lifetime of worship, which is why reflection, reflection is uh, uh, so important. وَكَثْرُ الْحَثُّ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى عَلَى التَّدَبُّرِ وَالْإِعْتِبَارِ وَالنَّظَرِ وَالْإِفْتِكَارِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book has regularly and abundantly encouraged us to ponder and contemplate and to look with contemplation and to reflect. Now, this is very important. So then Imam al-Ghazali says, uh, it is evident also that reflection is the key to gaining illumination. And it is the basis for insight. وَهُوَ شَبَكَةُ الْعُلُومِ It is the net for catching forms of knowledge. You know when you want to catch fish, you throw out your net and you catch them? That reflection is throwing out your net to attain various types of knowledge and insight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَصِيدَةُ الْمَعَارِفِ وَالْفُهُومِ And it is the snare for trapping direct perception and understanding. 
وأكثر الناس قد عرفوا فضله ورتبته ولكن جهلوا حقيقته وثمرته And most people know about its merit and know about the fruits of reflection. They know about it rationally. Yeah, reflection is great, beautiful. I love it. But how many people are ignorant? They might know that, but then they're ignorant of its reality and of tasting its fruit. And its source and basis. And its channels and the ways to uh, progress in reflection. And its pathways. And the person doesn't even know, how do I reflect? And this is what Imam al-Ghazali is going to open up amazing doors of reflection. How do I reflect? And especially in today's world, most of you here, I don't know about online, most of you here are adults. But especially in today's world, for young people who are growing up, with social media as a norm of life, with devices as part and parcel of their day-to-day -day experience, hour-to-hour -hour experience. I remember one time just when I was in Toronto, we were at a retreat, and one of the, the University of Toronto students, she said, she was 20 years old at the time, I think. She looked up and she said, this is the first time I've ever seen the stars. She's 20 years old. She grew up her whole life in Toronto, in a big city, you got skyscrapers, you have light pollution, you have all this stuff. She goes, this is the first time I've ever seen the stars. We don't even know how to reflect. We're going to need help just to get us away and just say, try to be calm for a little bit. Put that away. Don't think about it. This is more important. And then just to go from there. And Imam al-Ghazali, as you're going to see, he goes from the earth, and that we'll, we'll cover in the last session, inshallah, the earth all the way to the heavens. And he says, if you continue to reflect, you'll be able to even perceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's footstool and the throne. And as Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu said, my heart saw my Lord. What does that mean? What is the potential that we can experience? But we have to learn how to do that. And Imam al-Ghazali, 900 years ago, <laughs> he hit it right on the head. So how do I reflect? What do I reflect on? Why should I reflect? What's the end goal? What's the fruit of that? What am I going to accomplish? And what is sought through reflection? What is the aim? It's witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we said. Is it something that's desired in and of itself? Or does it, have, does it bear a fruit that benefits with regard to something else? And if it has a fruit, what is that fruit? Is it knowledge? Is it states? Spiritual states? Knowledge that is in the consciousness or both? So Imam al-Ghazali has this beautiful way of breaking things down. And exposing that and making that accessible to people is extremely important. So first we're going to begin with the merit of reflection. Then... And then we're going to talk about the reality, the true nature of reflection and its fruits. And inshallah, that'll be the next session with Shaykh Yahya. And then the channels of reflection, these different pathways, these different streams of reflection uh, uh, that Imam al-Ghazali is going to talk about. Primarily what we'll focus on is the human being himself, the, uh, the human being's relationship with the Creator and reflecting on the earth and the heavens. That all of those things are indications of the Creator. All of those things help you realize, like not looking directly at what you cannot, uh, uh, you're not able to handle, that you're not able to with, with, withstand. Rather, the, the signs that indicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, in the rest of this session, we'll look at Fadilatu tafakkur, the merit of reflection. So Imam al Ghazali says, Qad amar Allah ta'ala bit tafakkuri wa tadabburi fi kitabihi al aziz fi mawadi'a la tuhsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to reflect and to contemplate in His mighty book in more places than we can mention. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
so regularly calls us to contemplate and to reflect and to think deeply that uh, uh, in, in with throughout the Quran that you if we try to list all of the ayat, it would take up too much space. But the indication there is that this is something that is central to the experience of the believer. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not something that's a, a, an ornament of your, your faith, but something that's at the very core of your path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of adorning your heart, of attaining realities of nearness to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. وَأَثْنَى عَلَى الْمُتَفَكِّرِينَ فَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praised the people who ponder and reflect. And He said, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ali Imran, the end of Surah Ali Imran, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and reclining, or lying down, and reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. And then they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ They say, reflecting after looking at the creation of the heavens and the earth. All of this amazing order. And then Imam al-Ghazali is going to say some amazing things that everything in the heavens reflects the creation that's already on the earth. So you even see, interestingly enough, the constellations that look like a, a bull. I don't know much about astronomy, but, you know, a constellation that looks like a human being or a constellation that looks like a scorpion or whatever it may be, reflecting. And then you see this amazing order and you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, the orbits of the planetary, the celestial bodies. And you see all of that and they say, Rabbana. مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ Our Lord, there is a creator who created this. This doesn't come out of nothing. Creation doesn't come from nothingness. You created this. And this wisdom and this order, all of this is not in vain. There is a purpose behind all of this. Glory belongs to you. Our dear Lord, not in vain did you create this. So they come to that realization. That reflecting upon the heavens and the earth gave them an illumination and an insight. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised those who reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. وَقَدْ قَالَ ابْنُ عَبَّاسٍ رضي الله عنهما سيدنا عبد الله ابن عباس said رضي الله عنهما إِنَّ قَوْمًا تَفَكَّرُوا فِي اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَفَكَّرُوا فِي خَلْقِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُوا فِي اللَّهِ فَإِنَّكُمْ لَن تَقْدِرُوا قَدْرَهِ That Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said that there were a group of people who reflected upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mighty and glorious is, is He. In response, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Reflect upon God's creation, but do not reflect upon God, for you cannot reckon Him at His true measure. You cannot give Him His full due. You cannot comprehend Him fully and neither give Him his full due, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. In another hadith, وَعَنْ عَطَاءٍ قَالْ This is beautiful. Imam al-Ghazali has these, these uh, ahadith and these sayings that he uh, brings in the ihya that are so multifaceted. And they speak volumes of knowledge. And it indicates his degree of knowledge and wisdom in compiling this book. And I'm sure there's, you know, ulama have commented on that. Just the way that Imam al-Ghazali breaks down ideas through the Qur'an and through the ahadith. Anyway, وَعَنْ عَطَاءٍ قَالَ انطلقتُ يَوْمًا أَنَا وَعُبَيْدُ بْنُ عُمَيْرٍ إِلَىٰ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا So this is, uh, I believe, one of the tabi'een. So he said, we went, a group of them went to a Sayyida Aisha رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا فَكَلَّمَتْنَا وَبَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهَا حِجَابٍ so, so she spoke to us, and between us and her, there was a hijab, there was a curtain. فقالت, عبيد, so she said, oh, Ubaid, you know, what has prevented you from uh, visiting us? Naam. So then uh, he responds, and he said, uh, He said, النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, The reason we don't visit you all the time is due to the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, تزدد حبا. You know, uh, visit someone at interval, intervals 
and it will increase you in worship. If someone came over your house every day, you'd get sick of them. Afwan, in love. Uh, visit in, in intervals, and it will increase you in love. Jazakumullahu khayran. It will increase you in love between one another. If someone visited every single day, you get sick of them. But it's like, ah, oh, it's been so long. You're already going to leave. I'm going to miss you. So it's, there's a wisdom in that, right? That they say, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. And, you know, uh, uh, distance makes the heart grow fonder and so forth. There's a wisdom to that. There's a balance, right? There's a balance. And everything in its proper balance is beautiful. But look at that. So what, what, why don't you visit me more often to maintain the adab and respect uh, with Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha and to preserve that, that love. So then he asked her radiallahu anha, أَخْبِرِينَ بِأَعْجَبِ شَيْءٍ رَأَيْتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Tell us about the most amazing thing that you saw from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's an amazing question. It's, a, it's an intelligent question. This is a Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. She sees the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his home. You know, what we would use in our language today, you know, his most vulnerable, that uh, he's his most comfortable. And even then, that's actually one of the wisdoms of why the Prophet ﷺ had so many wives is that so much was taught about how to live in the home and how to treat one's family from his example wasallam. So what does she say? You know, and she sees the Prophet ﷺ at his most quote-unquote vulnerable. His times that he would rest and so forth. So then she says, فَبَكَتْ she started to cry when they asked her that question. وَقَالَتْ كُلُّ أَمْرِهِ كَانَ عَجَبًا All of his affairs were amazing. They were all wondrous. You want me to pinpoint one thing? Everything. Everything about him was a marvel. Everything about him was wondrous. صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمُ Then look at this. She says, أَتَانِ فِي لَيْلَتِي He came the night that he spent with me, until our bodies were touching. And then he said to her, you know, uh, allow me to uh, worship my Lord, mighty and majestic. So he got his pot of water and he made wudu. And then he stood in prayer. So he started to weep until his beard was wet with tears. And then he made sujood, and he was in sujood so long that the, the, the ground became wet with his tears. Then he uh, laid down until uh, Sayyidina Bila came for the uh, adhan, to per asking permission to call the adhan. ما يبكيك وقد غفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر. He said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, what? Why are you crying when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgave anything that would come previously or afterwards from any sort of sins that He's protected from that and anything would be forgiven?" فقال, so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "ويحك يا بلال وما يمنعني أن أبكي وقد أنزل الله تعالى علي في هذه الليلة." He said, "You know." Uh, woe to you, O Bilal. In other words, you know, what would prevent me from crying after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me in this night? Truly in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alteration of night and day, there are signs for people of understanding. There are signs for people of understanding. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ قَرَأَهَا وَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرْ فِيهَا Woe to the one who reads this and does not contemplate and reflect on it. That these verses, what Imam al-Ghazali mentions at the beginning of those who remember Allah standing and sitting and on their signs and uh, reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth and they say, Our Lord, you did not create this in vain. And Imam al-Ghazali is going to talk in more detail about that. He says, reflecting on the creation of the heavens and the earth is not looking at the stars. He said, animals look at the stars. 
But you have something that an animal doesn't have. You have the ability to perceive even more deeply. What is all this about? Look at what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informing us? What is in the signs of the creation of the heavens and the earth? What are they indicating? They're all indicating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's absolute knowledge and will and wisdom and everything. And that should increase us in understanding our servitude to him our humility, and that there is nothing greater than seeking the pleasure of fulfilling servitude to him and being given his love and nearness. Nothing greater than that. And dedicating your life to deeper and deeper realizations that come through that kind of reflection. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, the fact that he prayed all night and that he wept all night is an indication of the endless ocean that is attainable through these verses. This is not a small topic. This is not something that, as we said, is an ornament or secondary. This is, this is central to our spiritual growth and our realization. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. وَعَنْ Muhammad ibn Wasir. So now we're going to look at some of the statements of the pious predecessors. عن محمد بن واسع أن رجلا من أهل البصرة ركب إلى أمي ذر بعد موت أبي ذر. That a man from the, uh, Busra, he uh, visited Umm Dhar, the wife of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, and he asked her about the worship of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari was one of the uh, uh, illustrious companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. So what was his worship like? And once again, there's an indication of people asking about the Prophet wasallam, asking about the routines of the Sahaba, of the righteous, to benefit and learn from them. So she said, His entire day, he would sit in the corner of the house and reflect. That was his ibadah. He would sit in the corner of the house and reflect all day, thinking, thinking. And then when, when we, Imam al-Ghazali then exposes us to the ways of reflection and what we should be reflecting about and what we should be thinking about and what are the fruits of that realization, you understand why someone like Sayyidina Abu Dhar did that all day long. And you begin to realize why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, an hour of reflection is better than a year's worth of worship that doesn't have that degree of reflection in it. وعن الحسن قال تفكر ساعة خير من قيام ليلة and الحسن البصري said reflecting for one hour is better than standing the entire night in prayer وعن الفضيل قال الفكر مرآة تريك حسناتك وسيئاتك that reflection is a mirror that shows you your uh, good qualities and your bad qualities and sins you know, and it's, it's important because, especially in today's world, and, and I, I feel comfortable enough, you know, just conversations with people that other people feel this way as well. How easy is it just to be in the moment? Or rather, how difficult is it? You know, you can't even teach a class or attend a majlis without people looking at their cell phones multiple times. I'm guilty of that, personally. I'm not blaming anyone else. It's like this constant, what if, what's going on? Salah, they're, oh, who's texting me? Oh, the email, this thing to do, that thing to do. We need more peace. Even if it's, I remember asking one of my teachers for a piece of advice, he said, have a time exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, even if it's five minutes a day. And that's one of the things is that when you, when you say, five, oh, that's easy to do, but then it's about being consistent and about having that quality time for five minutes. That just thinking, Ya Allah, what did I do today? And this is coming after the book of vigilance and, and self-examination. Right? But this is now a further level is that that vigilance and self-examination is uh, indicating not mo as much about yourself, which is important, Sheikh Yahya is going to cover that, but that it also points you towards your Lord. That's really, what we're, that's really where we're trying to go with reflection, is one's own 
blemishes and shortcomings, not to just beat yourself up, but then you recognize the generosity of your Lord, the fact that he has not taken you to account, the fact that he continues to bless you, his beneficence, his mercy, his magnanimity, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so forth. Naam. وَقِيلَ لِإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّكَ تُطِيلُ الْفِكْرَةَ فَقَالَ الْفِكْرَةُ مُخُّ الْعَقْلِ It was said to Ibrahim, you, uh, you have extended periods of time just in reflection. He says that reflection is the essence of the intellect. It's the essence of the intellect. And كَانَ سُفْيَانِ بْنُ عُيَيْنَ كَثِيرًا مَا يَتَمَثَّلْ وَيَقُولْ إِذَا الْمَرْءُ كَانَتْ لَهُ فِكْرَةٌ فَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ عِبْرَةٌ That he had a line of poetry, he would say, if a person has reflection, they will find in all things a sign and a lesson and a meaning. If a person has reflection, like even I've heard ulama reflect on microphones. Look at this microphone. It's servitude. It's, ability, it's willingness to help others and to uh, project that which is good and people can use it for good and bad and so forth. And talking about, you know, the positive attributes of a microphone. It's like, for most people, it's like, it's a microphone. It's uh, metal and, you know. But even reflecting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in the more recent inventions, they all indicate spiritual meanings as well. But it requires reflection. And it's not just making up anything, you know, trying to sound spiritual. It's about real realization. It's about really witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his generosity in that. Naam. So uh, this is a beautiful story. An Tawus and Qala Qal al Hawariyuna li Isa. The apostles said to Jesus, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, Ya Ruh Allah, O Spirit of Allah, Hal al Ardi Lyom Mithluk, is there anyone on the face of the earth today who's like you? And he said, Naam. He said, Yes. Man kana mantukuhu dhikra. Whoever whoever's speech is remembrance. Wa samtuhu fikra and their silence is reflection. Wa nadaruhu ibra fa innahu mithli. And their looking upon things is taking the lessons from them. They're like me. Whoever speech is remembrance, their silence is reflection. And when they gaze upon things in creation, they take meanings from it, they're like me. That's Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam saying that, indicating how we should be, that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we spend time reflection. Not all silence is reflection. Right? Not everyone who's silent is necessarily, re necessarily reflecting, but it's an active, it's not passive. Something that requires a great, amount of focus and effort and determination. Naam. وعن أبي سعيد الخضر قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أعطوا أعينكم حظها من العبادة Give your eyes their portion of worship. So they asked, O Messenger of Allah, what is the portion of worship for the eyes? He said النظر في المصحف والتفكر فيه Gazing at the copy of the Qur'an, the Mus'haf, looking upon the Mus'haf and reflecting on it, reflecting on rec reciting it and its meanings. But even looking at the Mus'haf is ibadah. Even looking at the Mus'haf is ibadah. There was a, a woman who loved the Qur'an, but she was illiterate. And she would look at the Mus'haf and she would just lovingly, with reverence, touch it. Say, oh Allah, these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is great good in that. So النظر في المصحف والتفكر في and reflecting upon the مصحف والاعتبار عند عجائبه and contemplating and pondering its wonders when it mentions things that are wondrous spending that time contemplating it and reflecting upon it نعم وكان لقمان يطيل الجلوس وحده فكان يمر به مولاه فيقول يا لقمان إنك تديم الجلوس وحدك فلو جلست مع الناس كان آنس لك فيقول لقمان إن طول الوحدة أفهم للفكر وطول الفكرة دليل على طريق الجنة. سيدنا لقمان الحكيم uh, may Allah have mercy on him. He used to uh, uh, and, and Allah's peace be upon him. He used to sit alone by himself for extended periods of time. So then uh, someone said to him, you always sit by yourself. So if you sit with the people, you'll feel more intimacy. You have company and you're not feeling lonely. You know, there are people who are alone, but they're not lonely. But some people might assume that. So you won't be lonely. So Sayyidina Luqman, he said, 
sitting for long periods of time alone uh, makes a person have deeper understanding in their reflection. And thinking for long periods of time is a guide along the path to paradise. It guides you down the path arriving to paradise. Naam. وقال عمر بن عبد العزيز الفكرة في نعم الله عز وجل من أفضل العبادة that reflecting upon Allah's blessings mighty and majestic is of the greatest forms of worship and we talked about gratitude and actually Imam al-Ghazali later he's going to talk about the relationship between this book and the book of gratitude I should say it now because it's beneficial he says the difference between reflecting in this way and reflecting on your blessings that the type of reflection that he talked about in the book of gratitude, he said the book of gratitude makes you more thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This type of reflection is more directed on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acts and attributes. Not necessarily how it relates to you, but that that's a, a means by which you have a deeper understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the goal here is not that gratitude that uh, uh, necessarily that makes you more, uh, uh, you know, subservient, more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a type of reflection that makes you marveled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, marveled by Allah and witnessing him at an even deeper level. Now. وقال عبد الله بن المبارك يوما لسهد من علي ورآه ساكتا متفكرا أين بلغت. Listen to this. So Sayyidina Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, he saw uh, Sahal bin Ali, and he saw him quiet and reflecting. So he said, where have you reached? Saw that he's contemplating and thinking deeply and reflecting. So where are you right now? He said, I am upon the sirat, I'm upon the traverse over the hellfire. What does that mean? It means that he's thinking so deeply about the events of the hereafter that he was contemplating that moment. I'm at the Slirat right now. I'm thinking about the reality of these things that Allah and His Messenger have informed us of, of the hereafter, and I'm reflecting and pondering upon that. Naam. La ilaha illallah. Wa bayna Abu Shurayhan yamshi idha jalasa fataqanna'a bi kisa'i faja'ala yabki faqulna ma yubkik qala tafakkartu fi dhahabi umri wa qillat amali that Abu Shurayh one time was walking and then he sat down and he covered himself with his cloak and he began to weep. So we said to him, what is it that's causing you to weep? And he said, I thought about, I reflected upon my lifespan that's passing. And every moment it's decreasing. My lifespan that's decreasing. And قِلَّةَ amali, And the uh, uh, the small amount of good deeds that I have, the little that I've done, the shortness of my life, that my life is continuously getting shorter and shorter, and my deeds are very few, وَاقْتِرَابْ ajali, And my death is near. That's what I thought about. And in the 40th book, the book that's coming up next, is about remembrance of death and the afterlife. So this is already indicating to us the relationship. MashaAllah, one minute. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قال حاتم من العبرة يزيد العلم ومن الذكر يزيد الحب ومن التفكر يزيد الخوف By contemplating lessons a person increases in knowledge and through remembrance a person increases in love of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and through reflection a person increases in fear so these are some sayings, and it all really comes back to this final point, and inshallah we'll end with this. That Imam al-Ghazali says, صِحَةُ that, النَّظَرِ uh, This is Imam al-Shafi'i's statement. صِحَةُ النَّظَرِ فِي الْأُمُورِ نَجَاتٌ مِنَ الْغُرُورِ Looking at things, having the proper perception and understanding of different matters and affairs is a salvation from becoming deluded. وَالْعَزْمُ فِي الرَّأِي سَلَامَةٌ مِنَ التَّفْرِيطِ وَالنَّدَمِ uh, And then I just want to get to the point that's important here. وَالْرَوِيَةُ وَالْفِكْرُ يَكْشِفَانِ عَنِ الْحَزْمِ وَالْفِطْنَةِ وَمُشَاوَرَةُ الْحُكَمَاءِ ثَبَاتٌ فِي النَّفْسِ وَقُوَّةٌ فِي الْبَصِيرَةِ 
And Imam al-Ghazali says that consulting people of wisdom is a way to have steadfastness in one's soul and strength and in inner sight. فَفَكِّرْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَعْزَمْ So reflect, ponder well before you make a determination to do something. وَتَدَبَّرْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَهْجَمْ And think deeply before you act, you pounce upon something or you attack. وَشَاوِرْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَقْدَمْ And consult people before you move forward. And this is really found in the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And we'll end with this. In which he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, جَالِسُ الْكُبَرَاء وَسَائِلُ الْعُلَمَاء وَخَالِطُ الْحُكَمَاء That he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sit with elders, sit with people of eminence. Sit with those who have life experience, whose the, the, the kind of passions of, of youthhood have lessened so that you can soak up from their experience and their knowledge. وَسَائِلُ ulama And ask people of knowledge so that you have understanding of your religion. وَخَالِطُ الْحُكَمَاء And mix with, constantly be in the company of people of wisdom, of the sagacious and people of wisdom. And all of that will, inshaAllah, be a source of strengthening the depth of your reflection and will be a source of, inshallah, as we're going to look at, attaining realization in reflection and its fruits. Wasallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for watching one of Al Maqasid's online educational offerings. Our mission at Al Maqasid is to cultivate holistic learning environments rooted in knowledge, devotion, and service. For more information, please visit our website at almaqasid.org and connect with other online content at almaqasid.org slash connect.